What is wrong with me? Why can't I ever be happy? Why me? Life is so unfair. I can't stand this anymore. I just want to give up. up. Welcome to Spirit of Yeshua podcast. My name is Victoria Tape. You probably know the story well. In the book of Jonah, God appointed Jonah to arise and warn Nineveh, the capital of Assyria, that his judgment was about to fall. But because Jonah knew God would be merciful if he warned, he arose only to go down in the opposite direction, descending from the presence of the Lord. In contrast to the other characters in the story who want to do God's will, Jonah chooses to go down each time in self-pity. In Hebrew, the word pity is kus. It focuses on the emotion of having compassion for someone else, but not oneself. Jonah chooses to go down in despair rather than to have sympathy for his enemies. Four times the word down is used to describe Jonah's self-pity descent. Later in the story, God appointed a plant and it grew over Jonah to provide shade. So Jonah was exceedingly grateful for the plant, but the next day God took away the plant and in the heat of the sun, Jonah said, it is better for me to die than to live. So God asked Jonah, do you have a good reason to be angry? And Jonah barks back, I have a good reason to be angry, even to death. Self-pity is a dangerous, deceitful, and disheartening sin. The biggest clue that self-pity is not of God is the word self, making it idolatry by loving, desiring, treasuring anything more than God. Today, our definition of pity has become self-centered and dangerous. This is because we can get trapped in it, leading to a spiral of negative thinking patterns. Although self-pity helps to numb the pain, it can lead to unhealthy addictions such as alcoholism, drugs, sex, and even cigarette addiction. Self-pity can be addicting in itself. A person who turns every story or situation back on themselves, constantly feeling sorry for themselves. Now, nobody is willing to admit that they have self-pity. It's hard to say, I am addicted to myself or I am addicted to feeling sorry for myself. The reason we were so encouraged to share this is because self-pity is a stumbling block. It brings past failures to the present, blinding the individual from seeing God's goodness and faithfulness now. It inhibits one from unlocking their full potential to confidently walk in the promises of God. To be free from self-pity there must be acknowledgement. Take a moment and ask yourself, how have I participated in self-pity? Has this been my go-to for refuge? Have I defiled others in that journey? Ask God for forgiveness as you acknowledge this sin. James 5.16 says, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other, 
so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So please join me as I pray. Father, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I recognize you as my Lord and Savior. I come to you in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge and take responsibility and in my life for participating with the spirit of self-pity. I repent and renounce serving self-pity. I ask for forgiveness and I receive my forgiveness for serving self-pity. Thank you, Father, for your deliverance in Jesus' name. Amen. Now make a conscious effort to focus on the positive aspects of your life and ask God for help when you face moments of self-pity. Recognize the negative emotions and pray about them. Throw them out, renounce it, and choose to be glad in the Lord because your condition does not define you, only He does. 1 John 4 verse 4 says, You dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Friends, be patient with the process and understand that this is a new godly training. Trade in unhealthy patterns of thinking for healthy godly ones. Unlocking all God has in store for your life. Please consider subscribing and hitting the like button if you were blessed through our videos. And write down in the comments below to share your testimony.